One thing that, yeah. you know, I like to show people is just simple things. Like this, this is your brine valve over here. Mm -hmm. And see it's stuck in. So this would have been what was overflowing the brine tank. Mm -hmm. But now, one thing, you won't have it on the new ones. But on the old ones, they, this right here. See this right here? Yeah. That's how you disengage the motor. And then you can manually turn the key. Okay? So like a lot of times, hooking up this piston is, uh, is problematic. Utilizing this to disengage it, you can line it up real easily because you can manually turn it. Okay. When it's engaged, you can't, you can't turn, turn it. it. Like the new one, it's always engaged. You know, they don't have this old style motor anymore. Right. But these motors, you can disengage them, and it makes life for service a lot easier. All the way we're going to go through is, I just want to go through the rebuild of uh, Fleck 2900. Bob's here, he's got some valves that are in some pretty rough shape. Um, we're going to upgrade not only the internals and rebuild them, but we're going to upgrade the electronics. So we're going to ultimately strip these down to nothing and rebuild them with new components. So what I'd like to do is get you guys with your hands on it right away here. Um, I don't need to do it for you. Um, there's some things that you're going to find that are rather cumbersome other things that aren't uh, aren't so bad so what I'd like to do is just let you guys dive in I've got a few wrenches here um, it's kind of a knuckle buster in here sometimes things don't line up exactly the way that you'd like to all the time but uh, you know sometimes you get lucky so um, Bob I guess I'll have you jump in here because I'd like you to get your hands on it that way you can for a future reference yeah so what you want to start with is pulling off your power heads Okay. The power heads are the electronics. So to start, what you want to do is you can break everything loose. But I'll show you. You don't want to take it, it completely apart yet until everything is loosened up. Oh. It can be a knuckle buster. Yep, we can go ahead and leave those. So what you want to do is you want to loosen up your center bolts. You also want to disengage your piston. So to disengage the piston, what you're going to do is take that needle nose and pull this that center pin. We've got two of them to do. All right. The last thing you want to loosen up before you uh, start taking everything apart is you want to loosen up your brine valve here. Now the brine valve, as you can see, is extremely corroded. Um, however, you're going to want to take that off uh, before you try getting the back plate off, uh, just for stability purposes. If you want to hold the back side with. Uh, nope, just hold back there. Yep, so it goes right through the back. Oh. We may need to get a hammer. I'll get to get a dollar level where I can get it. So as you can see, those can get very crusty. You can also see this is stuck. The uh, brine valve is stuck. So the brine tank was overflowing non-stop. It actually looks like it's, it's loosening up, but the brine valve is actually so stuck, it's not wanting to come through. Yeah, it's turning. Is so it what we're going to do... Is what's the turn out of this? You can. Uh, no. Nope. turn out of that? Or? So what's happening is it's stuck right here. There's just so much corrosion on it. Fortunately for us, we don't have to save the back plate or the brine valve. Just want to wrench on it here a little bit. And this is the kind of stuff that you run into in the field, you yeah. know, all the time. So what you can do is go ahead and loosen this up here, and loosen this up here. And 
you want to just hold on to that that brine elbow. If you have a new one, great. If you don't, great as well. Just set that to the side. You can see the brine valve still doesn't want to come out. So what we're going to do is just leave that leave that be for now. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and take the centers off. Save your bolts. Now this process can be done on top of the tank or off of the tank. As you can see, it's a lot easier being off. Maybe a little more detailed. All right, so now that he's got the power heads removed, in this case, we are actually removing and throwing them away. Go ahead and toss them right in the dumpster or the garbage there. All right, next thing we need to do is we need to remove the internals, the pistons. So best way to do that is just to grab onto them and pull them out. Uh, use this little channel lock, so we may need to get a little bit larger one. Grab onto the center piston as best you can and just pull it straight up. So, this is your piston. As you can see, there's a lot of buildup on the shaft. Can't even pull it out manually. A lot of buildup was in there. Piston actually looks pretty darn good. A lot of corrosion on the uh, upper uh, shaft. You can just tell it's a, an old piston. So, so we're going to change that out. And now we got to pull the bottom one. Bottom one because it's a little bit bigger can be a little trickier. In this case, it came out pretty pretty darn good. Again, just lots of corrosion from over time. Next trick is we need to pull out all these seals and spacers. So. In that case, one of the seals actually came out with the piston. Next was a spacer. The next thing in there is a seal, another rubber seal. Nice part about the bottom is you can reach the seals pretty good. It may be necessary to have a flathead screwdriver just to kind of break it loose, to kind of pry against the, the brass, okay, to just break the seal. So you can pull the seals out. Oh, oh, pull the seals out. There's also a tool made for pulling these out, pulling the uh, uh, spacers out. You can insert the tool and push the shaft in as best you can. Loosened up. Here we go. So there's a couple ways to get them out. It can be rather cumbersome to get out. A couple things to keep in mind: if you do not have a manual, pay close attention to the direction of your uh, seals and spacers, or the order in which they come out. Let's get this off the tool here. So, in this case, it was the little end goes in first. The big holes go towards the front of the valve. Next is another seal. So, again, you can try to reach in there. 
it gets to be a long, long reach. You can still get lucky sometimes and snag them. There are cases where these do not come off very pleasant. Um, sometimes they come off in pieces. So again, it's every valve is a little bit different depending on the level of corrosion that it's seen. There's your spacer. And there's one more seal in the back there. The nice part about taking the valve off is you can also access the seals from the rear and push them forward. It may not be a bad idea um, if you've got an old junk flathead screwdriver, heat it and bend it. Uh, it works pretty good for uh, pulling seals out. Otherwise, like I said, having it off the valve or off the tank really makes the process a lot easier. Allows you to push things through. There we go. So we got the bottom clear. Now we got to get the top. The top becomes a little bit more challenging because the top is much smaller opening. So what we do is we're going to work our way out and pull all the seals out and the spacers. This is the spacer removal tool for the top. This one comes a little, in a little more handy than the bottom. We'll do is we'll just keep working our way back. happening there is getting a lot of restriction or a lot of uh, uh, friction from the old corrosion. Can you, spray it? Uh, you can try lubricating. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is when we're done, what we'd, I like to do is scrape off any of this corrosion that's in there. Um, just simply a lot of it is due to salt and hardness buildup from over time. Um, and just cleaning that off before you reseat your new, your new seals. You gotta be somewhat careful, but it is pretty forgiving. Um, one thing you want to be sure be careful of is when you're rebuilding this on top of a tank, if you drop any of these seals down in here, they can actually go right into the tank. So it's not the end of the world if they do, but um, that's one of the benefits of rebuilding them off the tanks.
check on them. Yep. So what we're at is we're at this last spacer here, the very end. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a, a angled screwdriver just so that way we can get that out a little easier. Yeah, a little hook screw, hook pointer poker. You're just cleaning out the corrosion right now? What's that? Are you just cleaning out the corrosion right now? Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of buildup in there. Mm -hmm. Not always is a buildup. There's our bent screwdriver. Well, all that for that. As you can see here on this, mm -hmm. one edge is sharp, one edge is rounded, mm -hmm. the rounded edge goes to the back. Okay. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to brush out the ins inside. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but what we're going to do is just get, knock off some of this corrosion. Um, if you want, you can start with a screwdriver or a file. Uh, again, you don't want to go crazy, but just break up some of the large chunks that are on there because the inside gets pretty dirty. See kind of how that green. Yep. And again, sometimes you get after it and then you start finding that bigger chunks are coming out than you'd like. Cleaning the surface because that's where it's where it feels. So at least give us a little bit of a cleaner surface. Let's throw a smaller brush on here. In the upper. good. What we're going to do now is just take the top off here. This is your injector assembly. out of the bottom.
huh? Look them. Just going to jam right in there. This is all hardness screws in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back, I can. Sean, do you want me to go grab some dust masks? Or? I probably would not. Yeah. Where are they located? Um, I have no idea. Alright, I'll go Maybe find some. Yeah, right. I usually you don't have that much build up, but I like to knock it off if you can. Yeah, I, I yeah. might even put a little bit of a fastening or something on this. Yeah, what we do is we, yep, when we throw it back. Uh, and I'll get you some. We put the O-rings back on. What you're gonna find is what we'll do is we'll uh, throw some silicone on there, and you'll be good to go. You <coughs> do silicone on it, and you put it together. Yeah. Silicone loop. So <coughs> we <we'll> use <coughs> silicone lubricant, but it doesn't set up. You know, it's not. It's, it's not like, like dielectric grease in there. Right. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. most grease. So just make sure they're well covered. Right. On your tank o-ring, on your distributor o-ring. grease in just to kind of make sure it sticks in there. That's it comes in handy. Alright, next we have our injector assemblies. Right. 
Oh, oh yeah, there's new oh, screws in the oh, yeah. okay. So ultimately, that points to the back. Sorry, what points to the back? Can you... So the brass elbow on the injector assembly points to the back. Screwdriver? Still got mine in the pocket. Okay. Did you put this through there? No, it just popped through. No, that's how it was when you gave it to me. Yep. That's what, it was sticking up a little bit, so I'm like, that's something ain't right there. Did you struggle with yours? I guess it goes in this right here. It's recessed down. No, that's where the throat's supposed to go. So that's why I stopped tightening. I don't know if I see that on yours. You just have that plastic thing in there? I didn't notice. I just put it on the way I handed it to me. Just to grab one thing here. Yeah, it's not going in like it was. It went right in before. Mm -hmm. Do it the same in your mind. Stick it in there first. Can you show it to the camera again before you're done? Yep. It's so what we're goofing tight. around with here is this little disperser that goes in line after your injector assembly. So it goes to your injector. And that's a little, just a little disperser that goes in line. And like I was just telling the guys here, you know, a lot of these components didn't exist in the original valve. You know, as they've made improvements or changes to new existing systems, uh, you're seeing a lot of the components will make, have slight variations in them. Uh, one example of that is uh, the seal kit, seal spacer kit here. There's one extra seal and spacer in it. They must have pulled one for a 2900S, which is the same valve, except it's the one-piece casting. It gets one extra seal and spacer in it. Well, they, they sent us a, a kit that has one extra seal and spacer in it. The reason that's problematic is if it's your first time you're thinking you forgot one or you're trying to jam an extra one in there. There's just not room for it. So what I'm talking about is they sent us, you know, we, we were counting and we we're mm -hmm. looking in the package and we're like, okay, yeah, there's six. Well, there's only supposed to be five. You know, so that's what you've got here now is five. You should have five seals, or excuse me, five spacers, and six seals. I've got six seals and six spacers. So, he's got six spacers over here. There's one extra. You'll end up tossing it, but I guess just hold on to it for now. 
Can you explain there was like a, a little black ring um, that you, you had popped it into Kip's... Um, sorry. You popped it in like to the part that was sitting below there. I wasn't really able to get a good camera shot of where that ended up going after you pulled it back out and then oh, you placed it somewhere Yeah, that else. was that disperser that I popped in. Okay. Um, and it just goes in line with the injector assembly. Okay. Again, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but and if you don't have it, it's not the end of the world. Um, but it, it can be relatively uh, uh, troubling if you have parts that you've never seen before. You don't know where they go. Now, a couple things. First off, I want to show you how to use the stuffer tool. When it comes to the stuffer tool, there's two different components to stuff. You've got you've got your spacers, which go on the outside here. You line it up, push it in, pull this out, and that leaves the spacer behind. Then you've got these rubber seals. The rubber seals go inside the stainless ring in the end, they get pressed in, they're nice and smooth, you push this in all the way, when you, when you have the seal in place, push this, it pops the seal out of the end and tight against your spacer levers. So I'm going to just do it for the, the little white ring, again smooth side, sharp side sharp side we want facing outward towards us so what we're going to do is we're going to just line that up <coughs> like to tip it forward slightly so that we would, the ring doesn't come off prematurely just kind of work your way back I think it's right off down. so this is just ultimately to set your your spacer stack at the right depth. What you want to do with these first ones is make sure they're all the way back. So I'm just going to look in the light here. Confirm it's all the way back, which it is. Now before you go any further, what you want to do is make sure you lubricate all your seal. By lubricating them, it does two things. First off, allows things to go in a little bit smoother. When I say things, the piston, when you put the piston in originally, allows it to smoothly go in. Also having the, the lubrication on them helps them to stick against the spacers a little bit better. When you put them in, You know, moved up good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go in just alternating seal spacer, seal spacer. So we've got that first white spacer in there. Seals pressed in. Slide all the way back. You want to make sure you're all the way seated back. When you get in, you press firmly. And I like to just twist a little bit. Make sure that the seal it's pressing on to the lip of the spacer. All right. Every time, if you check to make sure it's in there all the way, you can kind of see, make sure it didn't come back out as you pulled the uh, stuffer tool out. What you do, flip around, put in the spacer. And just alternate back and forth until you've used all the pieces. So I'm going to let Kip jump in here. I didn't feel it. Seals don't matter which way they go. Nope, seals are are not directional, nor are the spacers.
Should we be talking while I'm doing this? If you want to be teaching us anything. <laughs> Grease is greasy. It's pretty straightforward. It's just taking your time. Making sure they're <clears throat> snug against each other as yep. well as two. <clears throat> is the first time you have to redo it, reseed them because you think you might have dropped a seal? So take your time the first time to just make sure everything's in there. It's in there straight. There's no groove for this last seal. That is correct. Okay. So off. Kip's got his seals and spacers in. The next step that we're going to look at is we're going to insert the upper piston. Now, when you insert the upper piston, the key is is push it in, get it into place, and leave it be. You don't. I don't want to see anyone pulling or pushing it in and out because those seals and spacers are not compressed yet. The way that this ends up tightening completely is when we tighten the back plate on. Okay, right now the back plate is not on, therefore we need to be very delicate as to uh, where we place this. Kip, if you don't mind, I'd just like to see your flashlight. looking at is they all are sitting in there decent but right now our seal is that far out this piston should should push in farther than that so it looks like we're we're sitting out further than we should be our whole stack assembly which tells me that that back spacer probably isn't in place And this is due to, the reason that it didn't slide back all the way is probably due to just some of that corrosion. And it, still here. it becomes uh, relatively challenging. Yeah, you can see it in the back all the way. Yeah. So, ultimately, what does that mean? Well, it means we pull it out. But this is where, again, just, it's not the end of the world. Doing it now is a lot easier than doing it later. Go white. Seal. Oh, uh, yeah, go white. Yep. So you can go ahead and jam her in if you'd like. compare an empty one here. Well, let's see. <clears throat> see what I mean? It's yep. Can we compare it? Can I get a shot down here? Inside? Side? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. 
Let's open the door. Actually, Ryan, I'm gonna take a shot right now. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna try pulling it out and wrecking it. Yeah. So this one's not, not seated all the way. Right off here. Yeah, if you channel it down there. This one is not seated all the way. Okay. This one is. What are we uh, looking for? The white seal. Yep. In the very end. I mean, how do you tell that that one's seated all the way and that one is yeah. just further back? You can see where it is located inside the valve. Okay. So I'm just going to try pushing it back here once. Just allow me to move in that. <laughs> And if it was a little bit off, it's not the big, uh, that big of a deal because you can draw it in. But as you've seen, it was a good I half inch out. Too far. So it would have been very difficult. So Kip, I guess Kip wants to do the honors again. Stuff right through, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it they clean up pretty quick. But just myself and all of guys kind of like keeping it clean. Uh, you do your best. Yep. The nice thing about these is they're actual quad rings. If they were O rings, I think you'd see a lot of leaking going on yeah. inside the valve. Um, but because they're quad rings, they're pretty forgiving. Because what ends up happening is as you tighten down the valve, these compress and those lips become bigger lips. You know, it bites right into the mm -hmm. the casting itself. So it's the plastic, the white plastic, O-ring, then one of these, and then repeat the process. That is correct. Now every every valve is a little bit different. So this is a twenty nine hundred. That's how they they operate. <clears throat> Depending on the valve, you just have to always pay attention to. Either what order did you take them out in? More importantly, I typically don't like to do a rebuild without having a manual handy. Um, just to reference. Um, yeah, it's just nice to be able to reference. Kind of a picture up of. Yep, and you can see the componentry. Does um, that come has. with the? Um, I'll print one off. Okay. Because once you do, I think you know from what I've seen, once you do it a couple of times, it doesn't look like it'd be. It's not, Rocket the biggest thing is, is it, it takes time, yeah. you know, and that's what becomes the most frustrating. You know, I could show you some of the new valves where they take literally 10 minutes to tear them down and rebuild them. You know, and the thing is, too, is um, you know, if we were going to read that, these, it probably would have been easier just to do it on the softener, but then, like, you know, there was so much corrosion in there, that stuff falling down, does mm -hmm. that make a big deal of some of that stuff? I wouldn't think so. But if you drop an O-ring or something? If you drop an O-ring, then you're, you're out of luck. Yep, so usually if I rebuild it on top of a valve, what I'll do is I'll I'll just shove a screwdriver in like that. Mm -hmm. That way if an O-ring falls, it hopefully gets stuck in there. Um, if I'm rebuilding the top, what I'll do is a lot of times I'll just shove a piece of paper toweling in there. That way if it drops, it falls on the toweling rather than yeah. down into the tank. Yep. Because these were a pain in the butt to get off the softener. Yeah. Well, the one wasn't so bad, but I still had to pull it out from the piping because of the swing. It was everything was in the way. But I do like pulling them apart and putting the O-rings on. That's one reason that I like taking them off mm -hmm. the valve. 
or off the tanks. These were leaking too. One of them was. Oh, were they? Yeah. And that was pretty noticeable. And one of them was really dirty. So. Yeah. Now you can see that somewhere along the line it was leaking. Okay. Now one thing just to make sure of is check the the collar on the tank. Make Surface sure there's no cracks. Yeah. Make okay. sure there's no cracks. If there are, then don't bet it. Don't bet it. I have. Well, let's look. Yep. I think it looks pretty good. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just take a look, but we're also going to lube up the O-ring on the piston. You will look in here. Yeah, so you got all of them in there now? Mm -hmm. So it keeps got them all in. All right. So that's about where it should yep. come to then? And now what we're going to do, Ryan, is we're going to lubricate this O-ring on this piston. Okay. So get lubrication on there. I also like to lubricate the shaft. And then just pull the piston out a little bit. There's ultimately, there's two O-rings inside this... Uh, that slide on this piston shaft mm -hmm. and I just like to make sure they see a little bit of lubrication before we start the process of putting it back in. So what you're going to do is you're going to just push this in. Once the piston started in, what we're doing is we're pushing this last this uh, piston cap in. Ultimately that last piston cap is the last spacer. So you see right now it's pressed out maybe a quarter of an inch. What we're going to do is as we draw those screws tight after we put the back plate on, it's going to pull this in all the way tight and compress that seal and spacer step. And all together too, yeah. yeah, so you've got a, a much better seal that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, get Bob started here at rebuilding his valve. And then uh, Kip can also start rebuilding so the lower. Yep, so it's yeah, going next. So Kip's going to be putting in the, the lowers. The larger lower ceiling spacers starts with a, a white spacer, followed by the black spacer, little holes first, followed by one more white spacer. So in here are the O-rings that go in between the spacers. I'm just going to lubricate them up. Now these tools for the upper and lower are not 100% necessary. You can build them without the tools. Uh, the problem with that is you can't get even uh, displacement of pressure when pushing them in, so it's easy to get them to be a little bit offset. Um, you hear that, Don? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not easy, not easy to press them in and get them 100% secure without ha actually having the right tools. So I'll let Gip go ahead. Starts with the seal and ends with the seal. Feels a lot more solid with that big mm -hmm. one. Things going a lot yeah. straighter. Sorry. Turn my light on to make sure it was Spacers aren't as sloppy on that door either.
All right, next we're going to insert the lower piston. Again, we'll lubricate this O-ring. One thing to keep in mind is if you, there's two caps that go on these. The black cap represents no hard water bypass. So no hard water will bypass when it's in regeneration. If it's a white cap, it will have hard water bypass. So while the software is in regeneration, it will allow hard water to bypass it. So most single tanks use the white, most twins use the black. Also you'll know if you have the 2900S piston, which is the exact same piston, the only difference is the cap is a little bit different, it has holes in the cap. You can actually interchange those pistons with uh, the standard piston, uh, or you can use the high flow with the standard valve, even though you don't get the benefit of the high flow. Then you just go ahead and you press in your piston, once you get it in place, you let it be. Alright, so I'll let Bob do it here. That be now we can do the lower, the lower stuffer. Same way. <clears throat> Same exact setup. Well, this one's seal first or plastic first? That's uh, seal first. So what you want to do, get these in, just put it on one side, get it started on, on one end, just push it in. Alright, so you made that look too easy. I've done it a few times. <laughs> so put it in like that, yeah. just feed it along to one end, and then just push that down, okay. you know, kind of pinch it together. Spacer, white spacer first. Uh, seal. Uh, seal, yep. First, yep. Then again, this doesn't make no difference which way. It really doesn't, but it's designed the with the little first. end first, yep. Okay. It shouldn't matter, but I've never done it any other way. And be careful with these tools. Um, on the end where you see that stainless end that Bob was working that o-ring in If you're careless with the tools and you drop them mm -hmm. uh, You can find 
you know, a lot of people will throw these in the bottom of their toolbox. Treat them with care. They're expensive tools. And if you get that out of round at all, you really lose the value of having the tool. Um, you're able to get it in, but you're not getting the even pressure uh, that you once were. So making sure that you keep that in round, don't, don't beat on it uh, or drop it or let it roll around in the bottom of the toolbox. A pop. You don't want to be missing these. No, you probably have a special toolbox just for them. Yep. Yep, it's a good practice. Keep them in a common spot. First off, you always know where they're at. Second off, they don't get damaged. All right, next we're going to just go ahead and insert the piston. <coughs> Again, we'll lubricate the piston. Can kind of feel us squishing the O-rings mm -hmm. together and pushing them just a little bit. Yeah. And actually, what we're going to do now is we're going to just uh, pause the video. Uh, I'm just going to grab a few more parts, and then we're going to put the power heads on. Okay. Then we can uh, put those on. And those on last. Yep. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the fittings for, um, rather than utilizing the old copper, the here. we'll use uh, plastic. Those are for one side of it, um, the side that goes into the brine valve, but the side that goes up here, we just need to get that Okay. Here. So. Ultimately, what we end up needing is these inserts. So we can tighten them down. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you have an existing, your, your brine tank, do you know, is it half inch brine line? It should be, I would assume. Half inch. I think so. Yeah, it's I'm larger than sure. what, larger than that one you had. Yeah, that's not the one. Yeah. with it. I just had one of those. In the so shop. ultimately, because he's already got the stuff there, we we actually shouldn't even need the fittings because he's he's already got he's already got the end of the package. Oh, yeah. Out on site because he he didn't cut that off and replace that. You know the side mm -hmm. that's on the brine tube yet. So that'll go right back to that. Right. Right. So, what we can actually do, since he's got that, what we're going to do, again, you can start with whatever one you want. I usually prefer to start with the lower and work my way to the upper. Mm -hmm. So, the way it comes shipped, you see there's two yeah, bolts in there. Got to just take those bolts out. Those are actually new, new bolts, 
so you don't need to utilize the old ones. This can be a little bit tricky because the biggest biggest challenge with this process is putting it on and not hitting your piston. All right, you want to make sure when you put this on that you don't damage the piston at all. And what I mean by damaging the piston is you don't want to scrape the the new Teflon coating that's on there. So what you want to do is just get it started. Again, don't tighten one all the way down. Work your way slowly because you're, again, we're compressing, we're compressing the seal and spacer stack. So you just slowly work your way down. So switch over to a bigger wrench. That model looks easier to get to. It's a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less going on. It's one of the benefits going to the electronics over the um, style that's all about micro switches. It's just much cleaner. So now that you're tightened down, what you can make sure is that this is straight. Kind of eyeball it. You can take a look once you have your other one on. You can make sure it's straight as best you can. Also, things you're going to look at is you've got your piston shaft sticking out. We've now got to reattach this louver to it and insert one of these new pins. So this can be a little bit challenging. On the old style valves you could disengage the motor on the new style valves. That isn't an option. So what you got to do is you got to just take a look at how far you're off. You can see we're off very little. You can actually see partially the hole. So usually what I'll do is I'll just try to wiggle it a little bit, see if I can move it back at all. Usually you cannot. So what I'll usually do is just shove the pin in like that in the off chance that I hit it too hard and the piston wants to go all the way in. It won't be allowed to go all the way in. So what you're going to do is just give it a little tap. Here we are. Now it goes. It goes all the way through. I grab onto it, lock it into place. So it's locked into place. That the lower piston is set and ready to go. Now we can put on the upper. Upper, again, making sure cables are out of the way, making sure things can line up. Nice thing is it gets shipped with this little insert here. This is where your brine valve goes. But it gets shipped with it in, it holds it in place, it makes this process of uh, putting on your new power head a little easier. The other thing is, is that with the electronic versions, they actually thread into the back plate rather than just sticking in there. So go ahead and loosen that up just to allow yourself access to that piston once you get it open. These do not get sh or these do not come shipped with new bolts. So just make sure you have those handy and just working your way, being very careful and conscious of where the shaft is as not to damage it. I'm going to actually pull this off and make sure my screws go through first. So that what's happening is my holes aren't lining up because this bolt has got is just slightly off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen that up just to allow me the flexibility to move that around.
All you really got to do is break it loose. Once it's loose, you can move the move the motor mount around. Let me get one bolt started. Same thing as the bottom, once they're in place, see them started, work your way in slowly, alternating top and bottom. Also just taking a look, see how level the mm -hmm. control is, you really shouldn't throw anything off if it's not level, but I like just to make sure it looks good. Yep. And as you draw it in, just I like to watch to, to make sure where you are located. And once your back plate is tight. Do the same thing with the upper piston as we did the lower and get it lined up internally so as to be able to reinsert your pin. This piston is smaller so it's a little easier to push it around and pull it out. in place you just insert the key or insert the pin and you're good to go so this control is now done we'll come back to it for programming oh yeah I'm sorry <laughs> thank you Kip no brine valve so it is not done Through here real quick. So leaving this plug in helps keep things aligned up. Pop the plug out. Yep. And then you can go ahead and insert the and actually when you insert the brine valve, one thing you gotta make sure you insert it through the nut, otherwise you're going to have to redo it. Put the nut on first. Put the nut through there first and then line the, the brine valve up. And that goes straight up? Uh, it points uh, uh, to the side. Should be this. Which is where that line hooks up that I That's have. where your brine tank, brine line hooks up. <clears throat> At this point, it should be right on there. Yeah, that looks good to me. Plate has to be John. Yeah, just snug it on as tight as you can go. I can always adjust it. Yeah. All right. Once you have your brine valve on, a couple things to take note of. It says 2.0 on your brine valve. That's two gallons a minute. All right. Confirming that is always critical, so that way when you get to programming, you can assure that you're programming it correctly. These here get inserted like this. Oh, as you're going to see, I've got inserts. These sleeves so that it allows it to compress down. Just slide them in. Just make sure they're pressed in as far as they'll go. Before you start the compression, you should be able to get them on or get them started with your fingers anyway. Let's 
to make sure you don't cross thread them. Once they're started, you go ahead and tighten them down. This is where I shine. I would just like to make sure that mm -hmm. you give them a push to make sure again it's the first time Keep once you it. once you compress them for the first time the next times you it'll permanently be on there You can always snug them back up if you're getting a drip or anything when you put it in the cycle. You can always snug them more. I had to go back over it uh, on the ones that the guy put up on the ground. All right, so everything's tight. Now we're good to go. Only thing left to do is put on covers.